to kill a dominant. As dawn breaks over the Nicer Defile in the 873rd year of the Valisthian calendar, the armies of Dalmechia and the Iron Kingdom gather, and their icons, Titan of the Republic and Shiva of the Orthodoxy, make ready to take the field. Meanwhile, high above it all, a small party of branded assassins survey the battlefield like hawks in search of prey. The mark applied to the cheeks of bearers, identifying them as something other than human. The great nations of Valisthea have a long-standing accord to brand their bearers in this way, that the slaves might be traded across borders. The Bastards, a unit of trained assassins deployed to the Nysa Defile, deep within Dalmechian territory, and tasked with the elimination of an enemy dominant. The Nysa Defile, a deep, arid valley located in the eastern part of the Dalmechian Republic. During the Battle of the Twin Realms in 865, it was the site of repeated skirmishes as the Iron Kingdom attempted to make incursions into Dalmechian territory. Fort Zernitra, a stronghold situated at the western end of the Nisa Defile in the Dalmechian Republic. In the year 873, it served as the site of a meeting covened by the Dalmechians with their Waloda allies, in an attempt to enlist their aid in driving back the Ironblood, who had been a thorn in their side since the Battle of the Twin Realms eight years before. The Kingdom of Walod, the sole surviving nation in Ash. Walod has its capital at Stonhir, home to the mother crystal of Drake's spine. A warlike land, its considerable military might serve to keep neighboring countries at bay. While Walod does maintain a notional alliance with the Dalmechian Republic in Southern Storm, it is very much a marriage of convenience. The Dalmechian Republic, a nation formed from a federation of five small estates, it is located in the southern half of the continent of Storm and has its capital at Randella. It is also home to the mother crystal known as Drake's Fang. There is no official state religion and citizens are free to worship as they please. Dalmechia's key political entity is the parliament, which is formed of ministers representing each of the states, with the prime minister at its head. The Battle of the Twin Realms The Battle of the Twin Realms was a conflict fought between the Holy Empire of San Breca and the Kingdom of Waylod in the year 865. San Brakoi forces, with the power of the icon Bahamut on their side, took the Strait of Altha back from Walloed, putting an end to a blockade that had lasted several decades. The Walloiders, looking to hold back the San Brakoi advance by any means necessary, formed an alliance with the Dalmechian Republic, who themselves were waging war against the Iron Kingdom on the Western Front and prevented the Empire from progressing any further. The Iron Crusade, the fighting forces of the Iron Kingdom, ultimate command rests with the King, who issues orders directly to the commanders of each of his battalions. Ironblood soldiers generally prefer heavy clubs and great axes over swords and other lighter weapons. This rather brutal approach is indicative of their overall attitude, which has earned them a reputation on the continent as savage, if somewhat primitive, warriors. The Men of the Fist, Dalmachia's standing army. While officially an organ of the Republic, each of its five states is granted relative autonomy with regard to the management of its troops. Aside from certain specialized squads, battle deployments are mostly comprised of small units employing a mixture of foot soldiers and battle mages. The former are known and feared for their curved swords and prodigious axes, and the deadly skill with which they wield them. Dominant, those within whom sleeps the power of an icon. Though they look and think no differently to any other man or woman, they can not only cast elemental magics without a crystal, but also transform themselves into beasts of world-shattering strength at any moment, a quality for which they are honored, worshipped and feared the realm over. Titan, the Warden of Earth, of whom Hugo Kupka is the current dominant. He takes the form of a stone-skinned giant, whose granite fists shake the earth with every mighty pummel. Titan's dominant awakens among the peoples of the Dalmechian deserts, the recipient of this strength being granted great power and status by the Republic, in return for a commitment to protect the nation in times of war. Shiva, the Warden of Ice, whose appearance on the battlefield makes her enemy's blood run cold. The Iron Blood sent Shiva against the Republican forces in the Nisa Defile, where she dueled against Titan, the icon of Earth. Pride. It is the year 860, and with the coming of spring does Green once again return to the Grand Duchy of Rosaria. In the Baileys of Rosalith Castle, men who have soared their swords to their country train in anticipation of coming conflict. 
and it is here that one young man in particular endeavours to prove himself worthy to the ones he loves. Clive Rosfield, firstborn son of Archduke Elwyn, ruler of Rosaria. From a young age, Clive dedicated himself to mastering the blade, and his practice paid off when he was appointed first shield of Rosaria, tasked to guard the phoenix and blessed with the ability to wield a part of his fire. Rodney Murdoch, Lord Commander of the Rosarian Army, not only is he a skilled warrior and loyal guardian of the Rosfield household, he is also a fine tutor. Indeed, it was he who trained Clive in the secrets of swordplay. While he may be a hard taskmaster, his belief and trust in the shields that serve under him make him a much-loved leader. First Shield, title granted to the mightiest and most stalwart shield of the Rosarian army. The First Shield is entrusted with the personal protection of the Dominant of the Phoenix and is gifted a portion of the icon's power over flame a boon known as the Blessing of the Phoenix. Blessing of the Phoenix. The boon Joshua bestowed upon his brother upon Clive's ordination as first shield, allowing him to wield fire-respected magic without a crystal. It has long been custom in Rosaria for the dominant of the Phoenix to share a part of their power in this way, performing this rite of rejuvenation upon those they appoint as their protectors, that they might serve them the better. Rosalith Castle. Situated in the heart of the ducal capital of Rosalith, it is from this towering ivory fortress that the Archduke and his family rule their nation. An architectural feat the founder himself would be proud of, the castle has stood since the early days of the duchy and watched over the rise of this proud nation and the people who inhabit the city beneath. Joshua Rosfield, second son of the Archduke of Rosaria, Joshua was appointed heir to the ducal throne by virtue of his awakening as the dominant of the phoenix, his love and admiration for his elder brother Clive is absolute, and he is only too proud to have him serve as his first shield. His love for carrots, less so. Annabella Rosfield, Duchess of Rosaria, wife of Archduke Elwyn, and mother to Clive and Joshua. While she adores her younger son, she treats Clive and Jill with naught but thinly veiled contempt. Jill Warwick, born a princess of the Northern Territories, Jill was made a ward of Rosaria after her homeland's incessant raids were quelled by the duchy. She was raised in Rosalith Castle alongside Clive and Joshua, who came to love her as a sister. Elwyn Rosfield, Archduke of the Grand Duchy of Rosaria and father of Clive and Joshua. Loved by his people for his steadfast leadership both at home and on the battlefield, which he put to good effect in quelling the rebellious Northern Territories. Torgal, Clive's faithful friend, brought back from one of Archduke Elwyn's expeditions to the frozen Northern Territories, where he was found half-starved and shivering in a snowfield, having presumably been separated from his pack. Elwyn gifted the puppy to Clive upon his return, and the two became nigh inseparable. Bearer, a person with the power to cast magics without a crystal. In Valisthea, men and women who awaken as bearers are enslaved. They are marked with a brand upon their cheek and used as tools a cheaper alternative to the scarce and precious shards. This system of slavery has persisted for centuries and has become so ingrained in Valisthian life that few take pity upon the bearer's plight, seeing them as less than human. Brand, the mark applied to the cheeks of bearers across Valisthea, identifying them as something other than human. Newborn babes are checked at birth, those who are found to be bearers being branded and taken into custody of the state. Rarely, bearers evade this test. Either because their parents hide them, the testers are lax in their duties, or their powers do not awaken until later. Yet most do not remain unbranded for long. The Mother Crystals. Enormous glassy mountains, five of which tower over the land of Valisthea. They are the source of all the crystals that the people of the Twins rely on in their everyday lives. Not only that, but the lands surrounding them are rich with ether, making the magics the crystals cast even more potent. For these reasons, great nations have sprung up around each mother crystal and have long warred with each other for possession of their blessings. The Iron Kingdom. Also known in the local tongue as Heron, the Iron Kingdom is an archipelago nation situated off the west coast of Storm, with its capital at Craig Loiskter. The mother crystal, Drake's Breath, rises from a volcanic island situated just within or without its borders, depending on whom you ask and has been the subject of long-standing conflict between the Iron Blood and the neighbouring Duchy of Rosaria. The Iron Kingdom's inhabitants shun any contact with outsiders, which has given rise to a unique, if largely inward-looking culture. 
The Deadlands, barren wastes bereft of ether, where no life stirs, and magic is all but unusable. Here, both earth and water are stained black, preventing any seed from quickening. In recent years, the blight has spread ever more widely, displacing whole nations before it, driving once peaceable fauna to violent desperation and leaving silent devastation in its wake. Rodney Murdoch, Lord Commander of the Rosarian Army, outranked only by Archduke Elwyn, who is not only his liege lord, but his firm friend. The two share an unshakable bond of trust, Elwyn consulting with Rodney on all military matters. The Grand Duchy of Rosaria, a nation occupying the western reaches of the continent of Storm, with Rosalith as its capital. Rosaria was originally formed from a collection of smaller dominions, all of which now stand united under the banner of Archduke Elwyn Rosfield. Not possessing a mother crystal of its own, the duchy has long been locked in bitter conflict with the Iron Kingdom over possession of Drake's Breath, which lies still further to the west, in the midst of the boiling sea. Sunrise, sunset. As the duchy readies itself for war with the Iron Kingdom, its most bitter and long-standing of rivals, so too does Clive prepare to do his duty as first shield of Rosaria, to protect and serve his brother Joshua, dominant of the Phoenix. Meteor, the burning red star that sits beneath the moon. Folklore ascribes to Meteor the role of message bearer to the moon, so it is common custom across Valisthea to wish upon the star that one's heartfelt desires might be conveyed to the heavens and beyond. Ambrosia, born in the stables of Rosalith Castle, Ambrosia was chosen by the young Clive Rosfield to be his personal steed and raised by him from a chick. She is a proud bird and deeply loyal to her master, quickly turning her beak upon any but he who should attempt to pet her. Sir Tyler, a loyal shield of Rosaria and scion of a noble family. Tyler followed in his father's footsteps in entering the service of the duchy, rising to the position of right-hand man to the Lord Commander. He was chosen by Lord Murdoch to accompany Clive on his expedition to Stillwind, a level head who could be trusted not only to obey the young Lord Marquis's orders and keep him safe, but to help keep the fiery Sir Wad in line. Sir Wade, a loyal shield of Rosaria, chosen by Lord Commander Rodney Murdoch to accompany Clive on his expedition to Stillwind. Once but a low-born page, Wade was inspired to join the ranks after a woodpile fell on him, and his life was saved by a young Joshua. Stillwind Marsh, an area of swampland that stretches northeast from Rosalith Castle. The odd village could once be found here, but nothing to compare to the lively settlements that line the main roads of the realm. And with the encroachment of the blight and the creatures driven before it, even these scant settlements were soon deserted. There was a time, not long ago, that the songs of civilization echoed through Stillwind's knotted boughs. Now, the settlements lie abandoned, and the only sounds to escape this forsaken place are the howls of beasts that have filled the deadlands to make the bogs their home. Goblins, a common species of beastmen, while at first glance they may seem like mindless predators, goblins have their own unique language and are skilled enough to both cast magics and make rudimentary tools and weapons. While mostly found on the continent of Storm, the spread of the blight has forced them to find homes nearby human settlements, a move that oft ends in misunderstanding and bloodshed. Phoenix Gate, a walled keep situated near Rosaria's northwestern border, it was originally constructed to serve as an outpost in the wars against the Northern Territories, but its true significance lies deep within the ruins atop which the stronghold stands. Here, in an ancient chamber accessible only to the Dominant of Fire, is held the Rite of Ancestral Communion, an important ritual in which it is believed that the Phoenix can hear the words of the Duchy's forebears. This aging seaboard citadel not only defends Rosaria from Northern raiding parties, but also serves as sacred ground whereupon the duchy's dominant might commune with his or her ancestors and entreat their guidance on the eve of important battles. The ducal army, the loyal soldiery of the duchy of Rosaria, they serve under the standing army's lord commander, whose task it is to enact the will of their sovereign, the archduke. Those who show sufficient aptitude or who are blessed with sufficient nobility of birth are made shields, personal retainers to the archduke himself. The northern territories, a bitterly cold region in the northern reaches of the continent of Storm. It was originally home to the mother crystal known as Drake's Eye, around which a series of small nations sprang up, 
nations whose belligerence proved troublesome for Rosaria over the centuries. In time, however, the Mother Crystal's power dwindled, and with it, the power of these warlike nations. With the blight encroaching on their territory evermore, the remaining tribes were united and pacified by Archduke Elwyn Rosfield of Rosaria in the year 854. Clive Rosfield, firstborn son of Archduke Elwyn, ruler of Rosaria. Though all expected him to inherit the Phoenix's flames and awaken as its dominant, destiny instead chose his younger brother Joshua to bear that burden. In search of a role of his own, Clive dedicated himself to mastering the blade, and his practice paid off when he was appointed first shield of Rosaria, tasked to guard the Phoenix, and blessed with the ability to wield a part of his fire. Flight of the Fledgling the shields of Rosaria have marched to Phoenix Gate that the duchy's dominant and heir to the throne, Joshua, might hear the words of their ancestors, as is custom before any great battle. However, the night before the ceremony, the young prince is stirred from his slumber by the sounds of battle. The fortress is under attack, and Joshua must fight his way to his father with the aid of but a single brave shield. The Holy Empire of San Brecchi a nation occupying the northeastern reaches of the continent of Storm, with the great city of Oriflam as its capital. San Brecchi is the realm's largest theocracy and home to the mother crystal Drake's head. Under the rule of the Holy Emperor, the people of San Brecchi enjoy a life of plenty thanks to the crystal's blessing, which they believe to be a gift from the goddess Grega herself. The Imperial Army, the assembled forces of the Holy Empire of San Brecchi, while officially under the command of the Cardinals, it is Holy Emperor Sylvester Lesage whom the legions truly serve. On the battlefield, the Dragoons, peerless lancers renowned throughout the realm, are the Empire's keenest weapon, descending from the skies to sow terror and disarray among their hapless foes. The Phoenix, the Warden of Fire, whose strength resides within Joshua Rosfield, heir to the Roessarian throne. The Phoenix is always born in the Ducal line, and is worshipped by the populace, not least because its flames of both destruction and regeneration have delivered the duchy from disaster many times over. A flame summoned. The night burns red as twin titans clash. Dressed in flame, they vie for dominance, one a beacon of hope, the other an aberration, and a front to the very laws of nature. There is no room in this world for both, for there can be only one icon of fire. <laughs>